One of the challenges facing comic book character related media these days is how authentically a character or characters are adapted from the medium of comic books onto the silver screen. Since Iron Man 2, one movie after another by Marvel Studios is a disaster in that respect. Comic book readers don't expect comic book storylines to be replicated 100% into the movies. However, what they look for is the way a plot has been established and how the actors display the heart and soul of a character through their acting. Costumes are integral too, but with comic book characters, both need to be complementing one another in order to complete the overall persona. There is room for changes, but not at the expense of the fundamental premise of a story that made a character great. Despite all the ups and downs at Sony and Marvel Studios, Spider-Man movies going retro have been handled with care. Sony started out with an adult Peter Parker and an elderly Aunt May. Then they went for a Peter Parker in his late teens and somewhat younger Aunt May played beautifully by the legendary Sally Fields. And now they are going with a younger Peter along with mid-aged Aunt May. Opting for Vulture as the antagonist falls in line with Spidey's own history. After all, the Vulture made his first appearance in The Amazing Spider-Man No. 2 in 1963, and having Michael the Birdman Keaton play him is the best thing, not to mention Liz Allen being played by Laura Harrier, which is reflective of Spidey's authentic storyline and addresses diversity in 21st century America and the world. So what should we, the readers of classic Marvel era, expect from this movie? The Vulture is an important villain of Spider-Verse, especially the Earth-6161 uh, or the Earth-616 version. Created by Stan Lee and St Steve Ditko, this character's relationship with Spider-Man has been intense for the very least, thanks to stories like funeral arrangements and life theft to name a few. With the character being played by a great actor, can we expect the same intensity between Michael Keaton's Vulture and Tom Holland's Spider-Man? That's the billion dollar question. The reason being that Spider-Man, unlike Batman, is not a dark character, rather quite colorful, but his rogues gallery comprises of extremely dark characters who cannot be equated with the likes of Joker or Russell Gould or Solomon Grundy. Nevertheless, their attitude towards Spider-Man and his near and dear is merciless, to say the least. Trailers usually give some idea about a movie's potential for success. However, as trailers of Avengers, Age of Ultron, Captain America, Civil War, Iron Man 3, and Man of Steel have shown, never judge a movie by its trailer.